A PTI investigation has revealed that we will have a ton of college football games tonight and tomorrow. And here to help us learn more is our good friend David Pollack of College Game Day. Let us start with number 22, Texas A&M, a proud program at number one, Alabama. Alabama, which looks like they could go through the NFL at this point. Can you make any case for us that the Aggies will pull this upset? You want me to, Tony? I mean, <laughs> they look good against the, the second best team in the country or the third best team in the country or ever you have it with Clemson. And it, it was a competitive game down to the wire. Nope. No, sure you can't. can't. No, Sorry. No, 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 no. I, don't, uh, I, don't, I don't see it happen. Listen, th this is the same Alabama team we've seen year after year after year defensively at the running back spot, at the offensive line spot, at the receiver spot, but not with this quarterback. This is the best offense Nick Saban's ever had. This is the best offense in Alabama history, and it's just uh, it puts you in a bad predicament, and I, I think a and going to be improved. I think they'll score some points, but we're not talking about enough points to even come close to being competitive with Alabama. Well, you mentioned the quarterback position. I guess Nick Saban is going to continue to split the snaps between Tua and Jalen Hurts. Is he doing this to placate Jalen Hurts, or do you think it really is the best thing for the team right now? No, there, there's one quarterback. It's Tua, and you could tell. Now, listen, the Jalen Hurts is going to get some run. He's going to get some time. Uh, Tua has not, uh, not even attempted a pass in the fourth quarter this season yet. And that's because they keep hitting people in the head with frying pans and the game's <laughs> over at the end of the half. And if it's in the third quarter, it's not, it's not really a ball game anymore. Jalen Hurts is, is going to be there as a reliable number two. You know, a lot of us wondered about the, the four-game new redshirt rule if he didn't play the, any games early on and maybe you saved his four, four, quarter, or four games for down the stretch so he could still redshirt and transfer after this year. But, you know, listen, Tua is far superior. We knew that coming into the season. He's proved it already. Jalen Hurts will have have packages and he'll have he'll have uh, he'll get some time he'll get some run but it's not going to be with the number one group and it's not going to be when it matters the most which will be later on down the road it's going to be the Tua show let me stay with quarterbacks with Baker Mayfield he had a thrilling debut last night for the Browns but Kyler Murray awesome. who has taken his place has matched Mayfield's stats from last season already at Oklahoma Murray signed with the A's so he's got this alternative yeah. to be a baseball player but would he be a Mayfield-level prospect as a quarterback? I don't think so. Uh, the interesting thing about being selected by the A's, Tony, is Lincoln Riley is one of the best coaches in college football, and Kyler Murray's more higher paid than Lincoln Riley at the current <laughs> moment right now. So that's kind of I think that's kind of interesting. But um, listen, Kyler Murray does it, I think, in a different way. The system is phenomenal, and he's going to make big plays down the field. But Baker Mayfield – intermediate passing game and you saw it last night for the Cleveland Browns he just he rips it and there is no conscience there is no oh yeah I'm just gonna fit this one in there and, and, and oh I don't want to throw a pick now nah, bro he's throwing the ball he's just letting it go and I, I think Kyler Murray has more quickness and elusiveness and he's gonna make more big plays in the running game but he's not at the level of Baker Mayfield passing the football with timing and hanging in the pocket and doing some of the things Baker has but this offense is still gonna be a pain in the butt for everybody Urban Meyer is back, but his star linebacker, Nick Bosa, is out. How does that injury change the team? The deepest spot um, for Ohio State is probably their defensive line. And I think that's one of the best in the country. I think you could argue whether it would be Clemson or Ohio State. But I'll say this. Nick Bosa is the best player in college football. He is the number one pick in the NFL draft next year. And you can't replace that guy. They still got... Tremont, they still got Chase Young, they still got dudes up front that can win, but they're going to need him back, and I don't think they'll have him, you know, next week for Penn State, which is a huge week. The next three weeks after that, the schedule is very manageable. They can survive without him in the short term because they're so deep and so talented, but if they want to win a national title later on down the season, they're going to need him, and they're going to need him healthy because uh, some of those quarterbacks that we already talked about, whether it be Kyler Murray or Jake Fromm or Tua, you better have that guy on the defensive line wrecking shop. I will get you out of here on this, acknowledging that you're in Oregon. You can't talk about recent Oregon football without mentioning Chip Kelly. Chip Kelly is now at UCLA yeah. where he is 0-3. And the, and the father of the UCLA quarterback just ripped them. Why do you think, or maybe it's too soon to tell, but do you think that Kelly's approach is not working there the way it worked at Oregon? Well, first of all, and this isn't revisionist history. I, I mean, you can go back. My, when Chip Kelly got hired, everybody – uh, loved it and talked about it. I, I wasn't a believer. You're not going to get the Chip Kelly you got here. 
That, that's not going to happen. Chip Kelly was the first to do the, one of the first to do the no huddle. He had the flashy uniforms. He, he had something special and something different here at Oregon that he's never had anywhere else. I don't think that's ever going to be replicated at UCLA. So if you think he's going to win like he did at Oregon, I don't, I, don't, I don't think there's any chance of that happening in the future. But when you start talking about the dad of, the, of this, this, this son now, sh- I want the dad to shut up. Is it something with UCLA <laughs> parents that they just feel like yeah, now they have point. to talk all the time? I yeah. mean, listen, if you think it's bad play calling, that, that's fine. How do you help the team by opening your mouth and talking about the coach? What, what, does that, what, what does that do to fix the situation? I mean, listen, everybody knows that this team is struggling. This team is not looking good, and there's a long way to go. But I just don't – I never get how this helps anybody move in the right direction. I think Chip Kelly and UCLA have enough problems. This is just adding fuel to the fire that's so unnecessary. Thank you so very much, David. It's always a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Thanks, David. Love being on with you guys. Thank you.